I'm on my second watch. I had to preach this morning at my high school graduate um, high school reunion. I got slapped on the wrist by one of my favorite sisters in church. They want to know where I was. I ain't been at home in the last couple of weeks. But I just wanted to let her know I was out working. And the Lord is good. We had a good time. It was small in number, but it was an awesome time in the Lord. But as we used to say down south, I got to fill another barn of tobacco. And I got to go and do what thus saith the Lord, and then we go ahead to the house. Amen. Amen. So I won't be before you long. For those of you who have your Bibles, please turn with me to Psalms 150. <laughs> recorded psalm in Psalms written by David Psalms 150 when you have it say amen amen notice here the word of the Lord Praise ye the Lord, praise God in his sanctuary, praise him in the firmament of his power, praise him for his mighty acts, praise him according to his excellent greatness, praise him with the sound of the trumpet, praise him with the solitary and the harp, praise him with the timbrel and the dance. Praise him with the stringed instruments and organs. Praise him upon the loud cymbals. Praise him upon the high sound cymbals. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Y'all didn't hear me. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Let us pray. Consecrate me now for thy service, God, by the power of grace divine. And may my soul look up with a steadfast hope, and that my will will be lost in thine. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable within thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Reverend Thomas, you're going to get me in trouble up in here saying that I'm single. <laughs> now, I ain't all the way attached yet, but there is someone who is attached to my arm. And I'd like to acknowledge the presence of my lovely fiance, Sister Altanya Gerald. Amen. He just happens to be the pearl drops in my tooth polish. <laughs> and she's the retin in my certs. You know, click, click. <laughs> That's a little old school for some folks. But she is my soulmate for real, and I just want to acknowledge her presence. Amen. <laughs> And to these men, this Men Day celebration, I'm excited. Y'all are awesome. Amen. 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 So right, right. It's one thing to have men in the sanctuary, but it's good to have men that are on one accord. That's right. Y'all are on fire for the Lord and your pastor. Oh God. Oh God. <laughs> He's the quarterback, so everybody just go long and cut. Because he's calling all the plays. Amen. I read for you in your hearing Psalms 150 in its entirety, but I just want to focus in on one verse of scripture. I'm not going to be before you long. The Lord has sent me on assignment with a word, and then we're going to bless God. Amen. 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 Psalms 150 
and 6 records, let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Didn't have a subject when I came out here, but I, the Lord had given me one soon as I got off the sag. And he wanted me to ask the question, are you a thermostat or are you a thermometer? Are you a thermostat or are you a thermometer? Now, we all know the difference between a thermostat and a thermometer, correct? Amen. A thermostat is something that you set the temperature. And a thermometer is something that allows its environment to get it warm. Church is supposed to be a hospital. But it has of lately has turned into a museum because the people don't want to be touched. They just want to be looked at. Uh-oh. Wow. All right. Wow. Come on, Uh-oh. <laughs> we have come to a place in this postmodern church where we're looking to be praised and not looking to give praise. Wow. Mm. Something has cataclysmically shifted in the orientation of your psychosis of present day worship. Yes. We only worship God when it is conducive to our emotional comfort. Yes. But the question that I have is, are you a thermostat or are you a thermometer? Come on now. Are you a celebrator? Look to the person next to you. Are you hearing <coughs> on me? Are you a spectator? <laughs> Did you come to see what I had on? Did you look to see what the lady beside you had on? Are you a perpetrator? Are you someone that looks the part, that can say all of the parts, but you're just in parts? <laughs> Mm. Uh oh. Are you an humble servant? Or are you part of humane society? Are you what I call a PUI, a praiser under the influence? <laughs> or are you working on your PhD, prayer haters degree? <laughs> Does your surroundings or are you influenced by your surroundings? Are you a thermostat or are you a thermometer? We feel good in the moment while we, you know, had a good week. And then we'll give God glory. But praise is not contingent on the emotional state of the affairs of your heart. But praise is something that's within you. All right. Because my Bible tells me greater is he that is within me. That's right. Than the he that is in the world. And because of him I live. Because of him I move. And because of him I have my very being. I don't want to sit on a road that's cold and damp and dormant. I want to see how we can shift the atmosphere that we're not coming for a sophisticated program or who fried the chicken or who baked the cake after service. I just want to know if you are a thermostat or a thermometer. All right. All right, brother. We have to come to a place where we don't get caught up in the mechanics of worship. Mm -hmm. All right. And forget the intentionality of worship. All right. For those of you who may be a little lethargic in your worship, as you're attempting to give God glory, David, who technically sold more records than the king of rock and roll, who is dead. Uh -oh. Sold more than the king of comedy, who is gone, All right. who has sold more than the king of pop, who is yet no more. Mm -hmm. But because through praise, he reminds us who is the king of glory. Come on. All right. 
the Lord strong in might. Uh -huh. All right, come on. Yeah, set the tone for this final recording written here in Psalms 150. And if I can just share with you just a little bit of what he said, I just want to give you just a little excerpt of what we do at Durham AME Zion Church uh -huh. Uh -huh. on any given Sunday. We are called the Hood Church. Uh -huh. The district don't know that we know that they call us that. But it's all good anyhow. Because something good has come out of the hood. All right. But I just want to just give you a little taste of what I consider praise. And I pray that you just worship and pray for me. Don't sit in judgment. But pray for me and pray with me. Amen. Amen. Praise is the antiseptic which kills the germs of sin. Praise is the light that ripens the fruit of the spirit. All right. Praise is the oil that lubricates the rustic part of our lives. Praise is that of applause unto God and a request for an encore. All right. Praise is the invitation for his visitation. And you don't have to praise God if you don't want God to show up. Praise is the evidence of a person who has his reflection and that the reflection births <laughs> thanksgiving. Praise is the voice of the faith and the sound of expectation. Right. Praise is the nuclear ammunition against an antiquated enemy who has no new weaponry. Praise All right. Come on. gives God permission in your situation you can't control to aid you in circumstances beyond your capacity and assist you in the region which you have no resource. Praise yeah. is the prologue of the next chapter of your life and is the epilogue of the testimony of your failure. Praise right. is the highway supernatural drive zone. Yeah. Praise is the irritant which the enemy cannot handle. Praise is the aphrodisiac of the angelic host which turns on the divine beyond the throne room and then summons him outside of the realm of glory into the territory of your humane. Praise Come on. is the thing you could do when your thermometer stops working and complaining when nothing else was an option. Praise is the thing which should motivate you when you've lost your drive, lost your passion, and lost your focus. Pray That's right. is the alternative when depression is knocking on your door. Yeah. Praise, Praise is what is, which opens up the natural people and natural circumstances want to shut things down. Yeah. Praise is what brings heaven down to you and you up to heaven. Yeah. Praise yeah. is what knocks on the door of heaven and reminds God, I'm going to keep being persistent even when I should be running out of patience. Yeah. Praise Come on. is the very thing which noise unto God when making my circumstances try to embarrass me or try to silence me. Yeah. Praise yeah. lets God know if you don't do anything else, Lord, from the rising of the sun yeah. to the going down on the same, you are worthy to be praised. Yeah. Pray That's right. is a part of your job because he woke you up this morning. Yeah. He set you at the right temperature yeah. because my thermostat is at Come a on. supernatural Come level. On. Come on. Pray Come on. is something I have to do because I look back over my life yeah. after the cancer and after the diabetes and after the heart failure and the kidney disease. Yes, I think Lord. about Thank what you. God has done for me and not like church people. He looks beyond my faults yeah. and beyond my needs. Pray. Let God know. I'm thankful because every day with him is sweeter and sweet every day before. Pray. That's right. It should always be on your mind because when I look back over my nasty trifling life, without the help of a, an accordion or a timbre or a keyboard yes, player, I realize God that God has blessed me in spite of me because when he should have killed me, he humbled me. Pray. That's right. There's something Come which on. you should be in centric in your DNA seep within the pores and the waxes of your vein resonated in your process in your eyes and on your mind and in your dreams. Pray Come is on. what you created and what you were born to do. Now how many praises do we have in this house? Supervisor, that stuck-up co-worker, 
that ex-girlfriend or that ex-boyfriend that you waiting to go home and write an email to, to let them know. And I had to tell somebody that, look, I ain't have to wait to get home to write no email. I just had to walk across the sanctuary and just tell them you don't even know what you've done for me when you decided to become my enemy. All you had to do was give God praise and he'll set a table before the presence of your enemy. That's right. Are you a thermostat or are you a thermometer? All right. All right now. Which brings me to the point of praise. You have to understand something, church, that in worship, you just can't come and give God uh -oh. A wave. Come on now. All right, now come on now. Because when you were stuck in a wave, uh -oh. wow, come on, come on. when the flood came upon you uh -oh. in the late night hour, uh -oh. when you got that doctor's report that wasn't so good, uh -oh. and all you could do was just think back over your life. And see how the Lord has brought you from a mighty long way. I don't know how we can sit so sophisticated, sanctimonious in church and not give God a hand clap of praise. We got to pump you up to give God glory. We got to get you to stand Hallelujah. God made you and you not yourself. You know that all you got to do is come into this atmosphere and you got the control of the thermostat of your worship. And once you control the thermostat of your worship, the people on your road will have to accommodate the shifting of the atmosphere because I didn't come here just to put my little money in the plate. I didn't come here to hear about announcements. Come on. I didn't come here to see about your afternoon program. That's right. I didn't want to come here to put more money in the building. Come on. All come I want to know is there is a word from the Lord that's going to carry me through the week. Is there a word oh, from the Lord you. Thank you, that's going to get you. me through my job? Is there a word from the Lord that's going to keep the hell out from chasing me? Is there a word from the Lord that's going to keep me out of my body? Is there a word from the Lord that's going to keep me clothed in my right mind? Do I have any praises in here? Do I have any real showing up praises in here? Because if I have some showing up praises, God's going to bless you with showing up blessings. Do we have any praises in here? Look to the heavens. Say, Lord, rain on me. I'm going to give you glory. I want you to bless me and I want you to bless my household. I want you to bless my children. I want you to bless my relationship. I want you to bless my family. I want you to increase my territory. I want you to enlarge my tent. Because I know where I was. But I ain't the same person that I used to be. Because I know when I come into the God. Yeah, I know Thank I want to shift the atmosphere. Yeah. I'm tired of living off small because I serve an extra Hello. large God. Yeah. Now, how many thermostats do we have in the building? I know who he is, and he know I know who he is. He tried to come in the form of cancer, but I rebuked the devil in the name of Jesus. He tried to come in the form of type 1 and 2 diabetes. But I am here to tell you, no, I ain't got a lick of sugar in my body. Because the blood of Jesus has cleansed me. He has washed me. He has purified me. I don't have to worry about no sickness and medication. That's because right. We serve a God that can turn your upside down, right side up. That's he right. He can prepare a table in the presence of your enemies. He can show.
shut down your haters and make your haters come back and ask for prayer. He can make, he can make you look like you or something else when everybody counted you out. All you got to do is just shift the atmosphere of your attitude and you uh, you to you the highest you of your altitude. All you got to do is serve them. All you got to do is praise them because God said in his word, he's seeking such to worship him in spirit and, and in truth. truth. That's and right. you don't realize that in the word spirit and in truth is the word saint. Spirit and 